Good afternoon. I guess an extra couple of minutes as people are still joining. Uh, I'm Hal Bulliston. I have been West Berkshire Council's Executive Policyholder for Public Health and Community Wellbeing, Leisure and Culture since May 2020. Thank you to everyone who's taken the time to watch this webinar. Can I please ask you to put any questions through the Q&A button and not the chat as this is not being monitored. We hope to get through as many questions as possible, but clearly some will be grouped together where they are similar. We'll, we will be posting all answers to questions on the West Berkshire Council website. As many of you will know, we have been engaged in a wide ranging piece of work to understand how the community views sport and leisure, asking questions and seeking views across the district. We have a leisure strategy on its way, reflecting on how all of us use our leisure time and its importance to our health and well-being, both during and after COVID. This builds on previous work that the council has done, such as the playing pitch strategy, which was developed back in 2018-19, when we worked with Sport England and a range of national governing bodies to understand and assess the need for playing pitches and how we can improve the provision. At that time, no one could have predicted the lockdown and the huge impact it would have on our local sport and leisure networks. What the report also highlighted was the traditional links between schools and football clubs were under pressure. These historic links in the local area have been impacted by changes in the school system and the way football clubs have evolved. Over time, these relationships have become more distant. And we have tried over the last 18 months to improve how we work alongside our excellent network of volunteers, clubs and schools. We also know there are examples of best practice in the area, which has helped our understanding enormously. We are very grateful for the time and effort people have put in to keep our local clubs going. Since many of the pictures are on school sites, the council has worked very hard to engage with local schools to understand their needs and how old relationships can be rekindled or new relationships grown. As a result, a number of potential projects have been identified to improve community access. Commissioning reports and sharing understanding is important. But what is needed goes beyond this. In the re recent budget, we set aside £3.6 million for play and pitch projects, and this will transform the ability of the district to support the many local clubs who need these facilities, making them more accessible to local people. This is important in the context of the debate about Newbury Sports Ground, which, whilst important, is not the only element for the council to consider in its sport and leisure programme. Our commitment to deliver against the objectives of the playing pitch strategy is strong, and the Newbury Sports Ground is just another, if a major, example of that wider agenda. At this point, I'll hand over to Paul Anstey, Head of Public Protection and Culture, who has been the lead officer on these strategies, to explain what the project is and progress to date. Thank you, Howard. Um, as you've heard, the, the main reason for why the sports ground project is progressing is due to the recommendations and priorities laid out in the playing pitch strategy. Specifically, that all parties, uh, which include Sport England, the Football Association, uh, the Football Foundation, and the Rugby Club, uh, Rugby Football Union, agreed that the future development being planned on the Faraday Road site would lead to the loss of one adult size pitch of good quality uh, in a Step 5 Football Association grading scheme. As part of the normal process for decision making in the council, I wrote a report which described how uh, we were planning to deal with these recommendations and the priorities. This report was made public and again, um, as part of the normal uh, process um, so that people can see what the council does. And at uh, that point, we agreed that we should uh, ask people for their views on the topics covered in the report. We had 349 people respond I'm going to run through what they said. So, Stephen, can you share the screen for me, please? Thank you. So, as you can see, um, the, the, the first main question was, do you agree with our proposals that the new sports ground should be a step six facility? Um, now, that... Um, created some responses um, that I will detail um, later on about what a step six facility is. But you can see from the, the first uh, slide there that predominantly there was a, a, a positive response um, with a fair chunk of people who neither uh, agreed or disagreed. And I think that was due to some uncertainty about what that um, actually meant. So I will, I will explain that in a, bit, a bit further in the webinar. Next, uh, next chart, please, Stephen. So next one, um, how far do you agree that the different sports facilities, uh, 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 sorry, how far do you agree that different sports sharing a facility is a good idea? Um, and, and there you can see that uh, again, um, strong support 
for uh, this proposal based on uh, the uh, likelihood of it, the benefits of all sport um, working together on a similar site. Next slide, please. How far do you agree with our proposal that the playing pitch constructed at the sports ground is artificial? Um, again, there's some uh, discussion uh, about the um, pros and cons of this and some of the responses um, we need to explore in terms of our environmental credentials. But again, overwhelmingly, it was a positive response. Next pie chart, please, Stephen. Oh, uh, bar chart this one. So, uh, sorry, that's it. Um, what um, uh, facilities would uh, you like to see provided at the sports ground? And you can see there that um, car parking came out on top. And that's something that, again, we can uh, look at and discuss in, in a bit more depth later. Um, and then a range of other um, uh, facilities that have, that have come forward, and many of which are requirements of the Step 6 facility. Um, Stephen, next. We asked about whether or not there should be any prioritisation for different age groups. Um, and again, um, the, the, there was a, a majority view that this shouldn't be the case. Um, so we'll have to look at how that works in terms of our discussions with our um, counterparts in Sport England and the um, sport governing bodies. Um, next slide, please. And then we asked a um, final question around looking for people who or organisations that might be interested in um, running the um, sports ground in the future. Obviously, the council sees itself um, as a facilitator in this um, situation and, and longer term we will be looking for somebody to, to, to run it on our behalf. So thank, thank you Stephen. So from, from my perspective the responses were very helpful um, and I think it's fair to say that there was um, um, uh, and there is um, a majority support for what we're trying to do but that doesn't ignore the comments that were made by the people who disagreed and it's important that we look carefully at the project and find ways to improve it. So on reflection, um, what I tried to do was look at the things that we can do to improve our plans and then how we communicate about them from this point on. So why have we chosen a step six facility and what does that actually mean? The Football Association produce a range of documents on their website that explain the different criteria that clubs have to meet as they progress through the football pyramid. Uh, a step six ground um, is also referred to as a category G. Um, so there's, there's quite a lot of um, technology uh, terminology that we have to get used to when we're talking about this subject. Um, but the, the Football Association um, describe it as that the ground should have the appearance and impression of being a football ground suitable for the National League system. Um, and that is, um, if you like, competitive football, um, moving through um, uh, uh, sort of um, uh, into uh, the professional leagues. There are requirements uh, to ensure spectators can view the match, um, either standing or seated for the full length around two sides of the pitch. Um, at this level, there is a requirement uh, to have a, a 50 seat stand with additional uh, 50 standing, all under cover. Toilets are required for spectators and at this level there should be uh, two male and two female toilets. This is uh, in addition to dressing room facilities for players and officials. There are also specific requirements that deal with the pitch technical areas, site security, fencing, entrances, turnstiles and of course the dimensions of the pitch itself. The FA mentions car parking in its requirements and states that there should be adequate on or next to the ground on the site. Um, the, um, we, are, we are proposing 51 um, uh, on-site spaces with a range of practical options nearby, all of which will be covered in a comprehensive traffic management plan to be produced as part of the planning application. Second uh, reflection was, um, should we be aiming for higher than step six or um, the category G. I fully recognise the need to show ambition for our local clubs and we, we definitely want there to be success. 
But at this stage, we need to balance that against the initial investment costs and a realistic timescale of when a local football club may need to have more capacity and more facilities. And we will obviously be um, maintaining close links with our um, local network to make sure that we're aware of how that may play out. Is the site big enough is another um, question that we need to reflect on. So we've been working with our consultants uh, to make sure that the site as a whole can accommodate more spectators and facilities in the future. And we believe, um, and it has been confirmed through our consultants, that there is plenty of room to move up a step to step five or category F, which would require a further 100 people capacity. We recognise the view that has been expressed by many in the consultation that this is not enough and we will be producing an indicative plan of how further facilities and stands could be achieved. But all of this needs to be balanced against the specific discussions that we've already had with Newby Rugby Club and what potential impact that might have on uh, uh, infrastructure and, and the neighbours. In terms of how we would manage um, such an expansion, we do see this as a long-term issue. If a local team does well and gets a series of promotions, we will have to look at the next big step up, which would be at step four, uh, when we would be needing to look at getting the ground up to grade E by the 31st of March in the first season after promotion. So this will be a football club doing very well, getting promoted through the different leagues and um, needing to have a capacity of a thousand um, would require us to sit down and have further conversations with our partners, Newby Rugby Club, and look at the practicalities of how, as a council, we might be able to deliver it. We would also need to work closely with the promoted club to see how any improvements could be paid for, because it's not an automatic assumption that the council picks up the bill in those circumstances. Um, but we would need to make sure that the relationships were strong and that we could um, uh, work together to make it happen. It's not. It's worth noting, as I, as I said earlier, that at this stage, we we as the council, we don't see ourselves running this site longer term. We would like to think that there is a club or community group out there that would be keen to take it on and run it for the community benefit. And I think it's important to state at this point that we understand that there is concern from neighbours. Um, in the vicinity of where, where this proposal sits. Um, we've looked at it from a technical point of view. Um, the nearest residential property is 55 metres north of the um, proposed development, and in between it is Monks Lane. Um, we've taken a view at this stage, based on the advice given by the consultants, that there'll be minimal impact from the ground, but that doesn't ignore the fact that we need to listen to what people have got to say, listen to those concerns, and if options such as including acoustic barriers to the north of the site if we feel it's necessary. We can do that um, and provide um, some technical advice through our colleagues in environmental health that can look at things like noise and light pollution. What I would say on that is that with modern designs of lighting, um, the advice we're given is that light pollution is very unlikely given the um, ability to, to direct the light directly onto the pitch and we have the ability to have um, uh, modern controls which allow for zoning and dimming of those lights, which is both for environmental uh, and sort of energy consumption reasons, as well as to reduce the likelihood of nuisance occurring for neighbours. We are looking carefully at traffic flows. Um, we've, re we've reviewed what work we need to do. And as part of the planning application process, we will look um, at how to manage predicted peak movements and how to use best practice for park and ride links with public transport and off-site car parking arrangements with marshalling uh, in place. The site itself will have uh, secure bike storage and we are looking at the um, options around um, electric charging points on the site as well. In one of the concerns that was raised as part of the um, feedback was a question about whether or not the, the community really will get access to the ground. And I want to reassure everybody on this webinar that we've already had conversations um, with colleagues um, at Sport England and the uh, uh, Football Association, the Football Foundation and the uh, Rugby Football Union. Um, and we will be designing what's referred to as a usage schedule. 
what this does is it maps out the affiliated teams across gender and across all the different age groups to ensure a fair and balanced um, uh, approach based on the local demands. We will also look at how the um, uh, recreational use um, can be um, put forward and how that can fit into the business model. At this stage, no decisions have been made about how much it might cost to hire the facility, but there will be an opportunity to review this nearer the time if the ground gets um, uh, um, uh, permission and it's constructed. Lastly, um, there has been some concern about the overall supply of the pitches that exist in the Newbury area. Basically, focusing around the idea that we've lost the football pitch and we're proposing to put a new pitch on what is already a rugby pitch. We know that as part of our PPS objectives, so playing pitch strategy objectives, that we need to find another grass pitch from our existing parks and open spaces. We have already identified a number of options across Newbury and have commissioned grounds maintenance contractors to give us estimates for upgrading them to a level that meets the Football Association pitch standards. Um, we anticipate that this pitch, this, this new pitch, would be available for the uh, mid 2022-23 uh, season, um, but we will need to go through all the uh, appropriate processes, as I'm sure you can appreciate. And we would hope to be able to talk to the clubs, to, to local clubs about this during 2021 so that it can be used as soon as possible. We are mindful of, of concerns about the availability, particularly for youth football, um, and want to make sure that um, as part of this project, we maximise the opportunity of the momentum that we've got with this project. I think I should stop there and, and um, open it up for questions. As, as Howard mentioned earlier, please do use the uh, Q&A function, which you can see at the bottom of your screen. Um, uh, colleagues will be monitoring the questions and, and send them through to us. We'll do our best to answer as many as we can in the time we've got available um, and then follow up on anything that we haven't been able to deal with in writing. Um, and then to, to, to summarise all of it, we'll put together a kind of um, FAQs web page and publish it so that everyone can see what's been said. And if anybody who wasn't able to join us can look at it at their leisure later on. Um, thank you for listening. Let's have a little look at the questions. Before we go to the questions, is it possible to share your screen and just show the plan of what's proposed? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that might answer quite a few of the questions that are being raised, I suspect. Okay, no, thanks for the prompt. That look okay? Mm, you're a bit cut off on the left-hand side. On the left, okay. That's better. That? Yeah, that's yeah. great. So I can I can just talk talk to this if that would be helpful. I think it would. Thanks. Okay. So um, the brief that we gave to the consultants was: Can we firstly fit a step six facility, as as described earlier, into the space that we had been discussing with Newby Rugby Club? And if the answer to that was yes, how best would we um, allocate the facilities that, that are needed on the site? Now, what I would say straight off is, um, and this is you know, particularly relevant for my um, uh, 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 contacts at Newby Rugby Club, is that this is a, this is a plan that's uh, still a working draft. So there is, there is still um, likely to be some changes that will ultimately end up going in as part of the planning application process, but it's, it's a helpful uh, enhancement of where the version that we sent out as part of the public consultation um, and, and the um, uh, report that we published previously, it's just a, 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 an addition to that. Um, mindful of some of the changes and, and feedback that we've been given by um, certainly uh, my discussions with um, Newby Town Council and the community football group around um, concerns over longer term financial sustainability of a club wanting to use the ground. So we've increased and put in for this uh, a template um, clubhouse, which includes a function room for people. Um, we've, we've estimated the capacity at this stage to be for 30. 
um, with some on-site um, uh, uh, refreshment facilities. Um, and that, again, is designed to make sure that we are mindful of the fact that we are next to a rugby club and that we need to have, um, uh, if you like, a self-sustaining business model, but at the same time, not duplicating everything that's on the site because that isn't considered to be best use of funds either. Um, I would also just add that we've also talked about where the, the locations of the stands and some very helpful feedback has come through from, um, the, uh, uh, from those that we've spoken to about the location of the stands in relation to the technical areas and in order to um, take on board comments around uh, safeguarding for um, junior and youth football, where it's felt that um, stands should be um, in a in a, a along side of the pitch as opposed to on the ends, which, from my perspective, seems like a, a sensible option, um, just as a as a spectator of sport. So so we will we will need to reconfigure these these blue blocks that are on the plan here and here into probably slightly more preferable areas. But the idea being is you can see that the grayed out area gives you an idea of the, the, the hard standing that goes around the edge of the pitch. We need to be mindful, obviously, of our relationship with the rugby club and how their existing playing areas are affected. And um, obviously we need to maximize the um, amount of car parking so that we um, have the ability to, to deal with the car and the, the traffic flows that will come in, particularly around things like overlapping training sessions during the week, which we hope will be popular. Um, so yeah, I think I think that that summarises the the current plan. So we need to look at some questions. Okay, just going back to the top of the list of the questions, Howard. Yeah. So, Shall I take the first one? Yeah, go for it. Which I think is from. Mr. Pierce, thank you, Mr. Pierce. Um, clearly, we're not talking about Faraday Road here. We're talking about the new, the proposed football ground. Uh, and as such, really, I don't really think I can answer questions on, on suds or how that might relate to the industrial estate or the town centre. Um, clearly, that's going to come up in the future. And I hope that answer will come to you then. So second question um, from Paul Morgan. Um, will, will the council commit to undertaking a full public consultation when there is a clear scope and full supporting details with respect to uh, the rugby club? And when do they expect um, that this will be available to the general public to access and review? So what I would say at this stage is that the um, uh, proposals um, that we're progressing with will be going in front of the executive, uh, a bit like the first set of papers um, due at the end of April. Um, now, what, what um, I would anticipate at this stage is that the option to do a public consultation will be included as part of that paper. So there'll be a decision to be made by the executive about um, public consultation, similar to the, to the discussions that were had at the, at the last meeting. So um, it will be in the paper as a view to take, um, and then a decision will need to be made on, on the night. So I hope, hope that answers the question. Um, We'll uh, take question three because I think we've really answered that already, probably. Um, you can clearly, we have already agreed that there will be wider public access to these top class facilities. And, and our, our basic ambition has always been to produce the, the, the best football offer that Newbury's ever had uh, as a combination of both this facility and the additional pitches that Paul's already talked about. Okay. So, uh, next question, um, how would a traffic management plan for a site on Monks Lane be considered in relation to a traffic management plan for the Sandalford development? So um, for, for this, what I would say is that the, um, the, the planning application process for this proposal, um, what we will do is we will um, build on the numbers that we anticipate being a direct relation, in direct relation to our proposal, and then it will be a uh, standard for our highways colleagues to then take a view on current flows and any um, significant factors that, that might be at play. So that would depend, I think, on the status of the sound of the development at the point at which we make our application. But what, what I would say at this stage is that is not an area 
of expertise for me and I will take that one away and make sure I give a clear steer on, on the position in relation to traffic from this as opposed to traffic from other applications that are um, live at, at the time. Hope that hope that's clear. Well, I think you can answer a question for us as well, because I think you're probably more knowledgeable on this than I am. Yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. So this is from Graham Story. Um, would it have not have been better to ask what level of football the ground could serve compared to say Thatcham and Hungerford rather than step four, which few people would understand? I, 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 that's, a, that's a fair point. Um, and I, I, I guess, yes, it, in, in terms of um, some of the context around this, it would be helpful for people to understand what other levels um, uh, football clubs play at. I think uh, at this stage, what I would say is that the current Newbury team, um, uh, well, there are multiple Newbury teams, I accept, but we have, we have focused around what levels currently are um, in need and what the likelihood is in the near future for, um, for football. And obviously, we base that around the recommendations that have come out of the playing pitch strategy. So, yes, it would be an aspiration to, to, to see Newbury uh, be challenging um, Thatcham and Hungerford in the future, but they're not there yet. And so we need to balance that against the investment requirements for now. Next question is from Councillor David Marsh, which is all those questions, all these questions assume this will actually happen. Did you give local people a chance to say whether they wanted the sports ground in Monks Lane at all? Um, the simple answer is that the council's policy is that London Road Industrial Estate, as is at the moment, which includes the old Faraday Road pitch, um, is needed for the regeneration of Newbury. It's therefore a mixed use scheme for residential and uh, business use, which will economically rejuvenate Newbury, create jobs, and is vitally important to the future of the town. So we started off from the presumption that we needed to find an alternative site. We started looking at the uh, three other sites that the council owned and came to the conclusion that all of them had major defects. And at that stage, we started talking to the rugby uh, football club and got a very positive response to them. They shared our vision of uh, community football and rugby working together. Um, and that's why we end up at the conclusion that Monkstain was the very best option we could find. OK, um, question six um, from David Hamilton. Um, parking, are the 51 parking spaces in addition to what is already at the Rugby Football Club? And the answer to that is yes. Um, question seven. Um, yeah, one for you, I think, Paul. How does step six facilities compare with what was on offer at Faraday Road? So first element of that is, so as part of the playing pitch strategy, which is conducted um, as, a, as a partnership between Council, Sport England and the other governing bodies, so the Football Association, etc. Um, Faraday Road was assessed as a step five facility. Um, and um, your sec the second um, part of the question was, and, and typically, how many spectators did they get on match days? I'll, I'll be honest, Mr Norman, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, the, um, I, I'm certainly aware that historically, um, there have been um, a, a great number of people that, that have attended there. So, so yes, I know historically that that is that is the case. Um, and the next part of your question was, how could the proposed ground ever take a thousand spectators? So, again, um, I would have to part of the process for uh, establishing how many spectators a, a particular sports ground can attract, uh, uh, allow in safely. Is a, is a decision that gets assessed by a, a, an approved um, a, a member of staff. So I'm not in a position to know exactly what that number would be. When we get our finalised plans, um, I'm, I'm sure it will be part of our process to establish what that ground capacity is so that we know exactly what our health and safety responsibilities are and sports ground safety requirements are. Um, next, next element of the question was, have you considered that it would mean that the ground would see full occupancy throughout the season's weekends with the impact on other users of Monks Lane and neighbours. Yes, we have considered it. And again, the, 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 the plans that we will put in place will be based around, if you like, worst case scenarios. 
And when I say worst case scenarios, I mean when when the site is at its busiest and what plans would we what contingency plans would we need to have in place in order to deal with those potential um, uh, complications. So it'd be, um, as I say, how do we deal with off-site parking? How do we deal with marshalling? How do we make sure that the neighbours aren't un unreasonably disturbed? How do we make sure that we've got sustainable links through park and ride schemes, um, uh, bike uh, availability, um, and also uh, links to, to public transport more widely? Um, just, sorry, apologies, I'm just reading the next bit. It's quite a long question. Ah, okay, so in relation to the floodlights, um, has there has an ecological study been done with this, um, given the presence of nearby uh, and uh, ancient woodlands and roosting bats? The, the answer to that is yes, it will be um, part of the planning application to make sure that we've considered the ecological impact of what, what the proposals um, have in them. Um, and obviously we'll, we'll um, be advised by the experts in that field as to what we need to do to, to meet any requirements that are put forward. Or if it's if it can't be dealt with, then, then we need to come up with a different way of solving the problem. Um, Can I take the final bit of this one, Paul? Yep, Which sure. Is how much does this proposal cost compared with other options, including keeping Faraday Road open? Um, this clearly is not a cheap option for us to take, uh, and the cost is something approaching £2 million. Pounds. That has to be put into the perspective of the opportunity created by the uh, London Road Industrial State Development, um, which can generate significant uh, benefits to the council, not only in terms of site value, but in terms of the economic regeneration it creates. Uh, so from that point of view, it is good value for money. And I'm going to take the next one, if you like, which is from uh, Andrew Lees, who is a regular football club user and also in favour, I'm pleased to hear. Um, He's asking whether a hard standing footway to the club can be made, which avoids walking down the, the roadway at night. And I'm pleased to, that, to be able to say that this has already been addressed and there is a footpath going to go down from the southeast corner of the new football ground down to the uh, football clubhouse. So rugby club uh, clubhouse. Yeah, so certainly the, 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 the plans within the um, uh, proposal will make sure that there is safe, um, the, the ability to move safely across the whole of the site. And obviously, um, although we are clear that the, uh, the site, the, the, the sports ground within the overall site um, needs to have its own uh, security measures, it obviously needs to sit um, comfortably within the overall operation of the, uh, of the site as a whole, which will mean a lot of close working with the rugby club to make sure that the footways are safe, well lit, that security measures are in play, and also that from an operational point of view, people can move between the two sites in a way that makes sense. Because we're again fully appreciative of the fact that people may want to use um, different bits of the site at, at, at the same time, and, and we need to make sure that that can be done safely, um, and and to make sure that from an accessibility point of view, that the the, the surfaces are suitable for. For people of um, you know a, a range of different abilities. Um, right, next next question uh, from David Hamilton. Um, training sessions. So, given that um, New Rugby um, Club um, packed out with their minis on a Sunday morning, would this restrict the number of football teams who could use the facilities? Uh, Sunday morning is a day where uh, many junior football leagues uh, play their games. So I think it's a fair point and it's definitely something that's been raised um, by, by um, uh, others as well, David. Thank you for your question. Um, I think what we need to do is um, look carefully at what the usage schedule tells us, which again, as I said, will be in conjunction with all the different uh, parties. We will need to have a conversation with the local football clubs, but this will come back to the, the wider point about looking for additional um, bookable pitches um, that are going to be available on Sunday mornings to make sure that football teams do have access uh, to those facilities. So yes, there, there will need to be a blend of availability, but the, um, certainly the usage schedule for us will be an important way to, to deal with that. Next um, one is from Alice and Peter Blackborough. Uh, which says it is difficult to understand what is happening to Newbury Rugby Club. Um, I don't, if I'm being honest, totally follow the question. What, what, what is we've found 
uh, very encouraging is that the uh, both the, the management group and the, the trustees of the rugby club are fully supportive of this proposal. Um, they see it as a major plus as a, a community communal um, sports area. Um, and I, I think, Howard, if yeah. I, one of the things I was just going to add is that in, in terms of what is happening to the rugby club, um, realistically we need to we need to sort of break this down into two two elements which is that it, it goes without saying that what what we're proposing to do is um, put something on an existing rugby pitch there's no denying no getting away from that fact what we've tried to do in the balancing of um, our proposals is to make sure that the rugby club are getting the right level of access to these facilities balanced against what we know we need to do for the wider community and anything that we are proposing to, to build or put onto this site needs to be done in a way that doesn't upset any of the operational requirements of Newbury Rugby Club because we, we respect their position in terms of um, you know making sure that they're competitive that they've got a, a solid operation and that the trustees and the committee can talk to the membership and explain that they've done you know, right by, by the members. So from my perspective, the, the council and the, the rugby club have been working tirelessly to make sure that all of those different angles can be um, understood. And we've got clear steer from the committee as to what the members have asked to be taken into consideration. Excuse me a minute. Well, the next question really is, is in terms of um, restrictions and availability. Um, that's really part of the, the use agreement which we're putting together. I don't know whether you want to address that or not. Yeah, so, so yeah, thank you. It's a question from, from Graham's story. So will there be restrictions on time available in the evenings or weekend? Um, I, I guess how we will have to um, deal with that is through the planning application process. So obviously, there's a, again, there's a balance between running an operation that makes sense in terms of community sport, running an operation that makes sense in terms of the finances and running an operation that gives everybody um, as much um, uh, sort of opportunity as possible. I think what, what I would say is obviously we're putting floodlights in um, that enables us to play into the evenings um, and we need to make sure that we do that in light of a, an understanding of the impact of any uh, neighbouring properties. So the restrictions will be based around, I think, the, the, the considerations of those factors within the planning application process. And obviously we will try and find the right line between maximum access without it impacting negatively or too negatively. Let's, you know, let's be honest, I, I need to make sure that there is a, an understanding that we're not saying there will be no impact, but we think it will be entirely manageable, the impact. Um, and that that will be the that will be the the judgment call will be on the planning application and what we put forward as the mitigation for, for trying to prevent any of those things um, happening off site. Next question is from Robert Whiting about uh, whether as a proposed facility is basically for Newbury Football Club, are they not willing to manage such a facility? Okay. Uh, we have we have discussed it with them, but no views have come through yet. No, what so so what what I would say on this is. The playing pitch strategy has to identify who the various groups are that would be impacted by the availability of pitches. And it, it again, is, it's a matter of fact that there was a relationship between the council and Newby Football Club um, at a point in time. And so we've maintained the link with them to understand what they're doing, how they're getting on and um, to, to support them where it's um, appropriate. And again, in terms of any discussions into the future, Newbury Football Club will be one of the groups that we talk to about how the, the use of this ground is moving, you know, moving forward. So they're, 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 they're not the only people, but they are on the list of people that we need to talk to to make sure we understand what their needs are. Next question is from Councillor David Marsh. You referred your discussion with Newbury Town Council. They're totally opposed to this, aren't they? Uh, Paul, I know you had the discussion with Newbury Town Council. So my understanding is they are ambivalent, is perhaps the best way to describe it. 
I, I think um, my, my discussions with Newbury Town Council were based around some of the similar issues that have been um, discussed this evening and about making sure that, you know, we can demonstrate, you know, a, a definitive commitment to, to the um, outcomes of the playing pitch strategy. Uh, and, and again, I won't, I won't comment on any particular issues that were raised by Newbury Town Council, but I think it's fair to say that most of the, um, uh, uh, the views are focused around the things that have, we, we've sought to address in this evening's webinar and, and, and you know, the, the consultation process and what goes into the papers that, that will be considered by the executive. So I, I think it's, it's, not a, it's not a blanket um, um, opposition, but, but there are obviously some um, things that need to be worked through in terms of the project to make sure it, it you know, minimises disruption and, and sort of maximises the opportunity for, for the clubs to, to get on the pitch and start you know, playing on a good quality surface. Um, Next question is from Neil Clarkson. Is the car park shown on the planks as efficient for overlapping sessions? I just mentioned, or are you intending to add more car parking space than shown there? I think the simple answer is we think that at the moment we have uh, sufficient car parking spaces, uh, but the uh, discussions are in hand for alternative overflow class of car parking. Um, but clearly, that's not something we can talk about at the moment. It's commercially sensitive. Yeah, I, I, I think the the plan uh, is considered sufficient based on a, te a technical assessment. Um, so it's 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 based on a desktop exercise, and and we're obviously aware of the fact that you know de desktop exercises get us so far, but we need to understand some of the other practicalities. So the the planning that will go into managing this will need to incorporate the idea of um, movement and and parking requirements beyond fifty one cars, but we don't need um in, in terms of the requirements from the ground grading specifications 51 spaces is 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 plenty um but i accept and respect the fact that some people will see that as insufficient and we just need to, to look at alternatives we, we are not trying to encourage everybody to drive to this this uh, new sports ground um i think we might have I think we might have missed one. Um, there's another question here from Graham Story that says, um, if the papers only go to the executive, does that mean that local councils will be excluded from the discussion? So I, I suppose there's the, the procedural element of the executive means that um, there is a, a, a sort of requirement to put questions to the executive in advance. And there's a whole process for that. So if you're not aware of how that works then again i can make sure that, that colleagues get back to you and um, make sure that you understand how you can ask questions of the executive when they consider the papers but i think what we're trying to do is make sure that we understand some of the views in advance of that paper being produced so that we can reflect on them and see if there's any improvements that can be made in advance of the executive deciding but but yeah you can you can express your your views through the, the asking of questions at the executive, um, uh, Mr. Story. Um, so two more questions have come through from uh, Peter Norman. So what happens if um, the rugby club members turn down the um, proposals? So I think where, where we're at at the moment is the council are still in negotiations with the rugby club. Um, but we are hopeful that, and, and confident that that, that, that process will, will you know, come to a, you know, a positive conclusion. But at the end of the day, if they change their mind, which they're entitled to do, then we have to look at another site. And that's, that's, you know, that's, what, that's, that's where the council's um, you know, um, positioned itself, which is that we've, we've looked at a number of sites and this is the one that we feel is the best option and we'll proceed with that until it's no longer on the table. Um, and then the second part of that question was, how generous are the parking bays given prevalence of SUVs? To be honest, I don't know what the technical specification is for the parking bays, but I would say that um, based on my understanding of how consultants put these things together, the, the, the plan will be is that there's a, 
a standard specification for car parking and it will meet that specification but i can get back to you on on that on i can that help I can, I can help a little on that one paul standard size of a car parking space is 4.8 meters by 2.4 meters uh, which is standard for all car parks um and supermarkets whatever and it's probably the same standards okay thank you um next question is from andrew lees um as a, as a regular um User I think we've covered this one already, Paul. Oh, okay. okay, sorry. Uh, yes. David Hamilton is an approximate cost of the build of the facility. And would there be an ongoing rental fee to NRFC or is the land being purchased from them? Uh, it will be a 40 year lease from uh, Newby Rugby Football Club and there will be a rent. Um, I'm afraid all the figures are still confidential and can't be disclosed at this stage. Okay, next one is from Russell Shackleton. Uh, to what extent would parking provision be for electric vehicles? That's a good question, Mr. Shackleton. Um, we haven't identified how many spaces, but we've certainly looked at our options for installing um, uh, charge points. Um, what I would hope is that we can firm that up a little bit as part of the um, planning process. But again, we'll, we'll need to look at the um, availability of the, um, the services that are on the site. Um, but I would certainly, I would like to think that we, we will be planning for the future and, and electric vehicles is part of that uh, in, it's particularly in terms of our environment strategy so yes that is that is definitely part of the consideration um next question from jason bravewood about uh, uh splitting the pitch into three for junior football which i'm sure is exactly what we're intending so so yeah um thanks um mr bravewood I, I think what we're um anticipating is that as part of the usage schedule with um, and the discussions with um, uh, the FA and, and Football Foundation will be to identify um, what we think that if you like the optimum use um, for those uh, for, the, for the pitch will be and, and invariably that will um, involve talking to, 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 to people like yourselves in the community who, who, um, who understand the, the, the grassroots demands um, better than me so so we'll be we'll be seeking views on that. But at the end of the day, we want the facilities to be used. So we'll mark it out and, and split it up to make sure that we, you know, we get the best of all worlds and, and get as many people playing on there as, as possible. Um, next question. Is on bus service or park and ride service. Um, this is all part of the transport uh, reports yeah. being put together. So yeah, um, it's a question from Vaughan Miller. So yeah, elaborating on the possibilities for bus service. So, so what, what we looked at was um, how we would um, work with the transport team to put together um, um, services that meant, because again, it's a concern that's been raised um, previously around you know, this proposed location as, a, as opposed to the, the previous um, um, uh, discussions around where Faraday Road is in relation to the town centre. What we've what we've looked at and, and discussed is how we can um, uh, use the council's fleet to essentially support movement of people in a more sustainable way between the town centre, the uh, train station, the bus station, um, when the demand tells us that that's likely to be needed. So again, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be something that would be done um, on every day but it would be done when we felt that there were occasions where more people would be coming into the area and that those services would be used. And obviously we would be marketing them and um, um, proposing um, uh, for people to use them as and when those um, different types of events pop up. So again, it would be um, hopefully kind of around things like match days and um, uh, looking at the scheduling over the course of a, of a season to see when um, uh, games um, would benefit from from that kind of service. So that, that's the that's the principle of what we're trying to achieve with that. Um, so next question from John Stewart. When rugby and football fixtures or training clash uh, because they want the same time slots, who gets priority? So again, we would be aiming to to deal with that in advance with the usage schedule. So that the plan will be is that almost on a season by season by hope the season by season basis everybody will know exactly what slots they've had allocated to them and that we can do it in a fair and transparent way um, and make sure that everybody gets um, their fair share of access to the site 
Next question from Ryan. Part of the reason the current Newbury team have gone down the leagues is largely down to the loss of Faraday Road. Do you not believe that having a standalone facility similar to Thatcham and Hunkford would help Newbury get back to that level? Uh, Ryan, I, I think that's what we're trying to achieve here. It's, uh, it's going to be a state-of-the-art, high-quality facility, um, which will allow the Newbury ladies and men's teams to rise through the leagues um, with the scope to ex extend and improve the, 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 the facility even further as they need it. Yeah, I, um, I, I'll just add, in, in terms of a standalone facility, um, I think it's important to bear in mind that at the level we're talking, it is certainly considered um, more favourably um, in terms of policy and the um, consultation that I've had as part of the playing pitch strategy process, that aligning different sports clubs um, on adjoining sites, as a, you know, we can talk about it as the same site or adjoining sites, depending on which way you look at it. Um, it, is, it is better and uh, more sustainable to try and find clubs who can work closely together so that all of the things that go along with running community sports groups are just that little bit easier. You know, um, groups of volunteers who can work together, provide more uh, resilience, um, being able to buy things together, reduces costs, making sure that the um, uh, uh, opportunities for young people to um, play different sports at the same locations these are all things that sport england encourage they don't insist on it but they encourage it and that's one of the things that we're trying to do um, and we said that we were going to try and do as part of the playing pitch strategy so i i understand what you're what you're saying but in in current circumstances actually i think um all all sports clubs um will, will benefit in, in in terms of it, it being um a site where more than one group play. Um, next Just question. Russell Shacklin, how long will the construction phase likely take in terms of disruptions to local residents? Uh, we have got a detailed report from consultants. Uh, once planning, detailed planning is achieved, uh, our anticipation is something in the region of just over six months. Um, clearly, anything can happen, but uh, that is the, the anticipated hope. Yeah, I, I think what I'll just add is that, again, we've, we've also, we're mindful of um, the, the, the disruption that the um, construction might have on the rugby club itself. And, and we will be very careful to, to minimise that impact. And if we can phase the project in a way that, that minimises that problem, then, then we will do that as well. But again, it's, it is not in our interests as a council to be causing unnecessary disruption. So we will do what we can to put together a sensitive project and, and you know, balance out the needs of getting it done within a reasonable time frame and making sure that you know, disruption is, is minimised. Next question was from Paul Morgan. At the last full council meeting, Councillor Willis and I, me, said that the capital cost of the rugby club proposal was circa 1.3 million. Once the full deal of the proposal is finalised, is this estimate likely to increase and what are the associated estimated annual running costs? Uh, the costs have increased because we've improved the specification, in particular by expanding the function room um, to create a much better um, facility going forward. Um, but beyond that, I can't comment as it's all down to executive approval, approval at the end of April. Um, and your estimated annual running costs. You want to cover that, Paul? Yeah, so I, I, again, what, what we would be hoping is that um, as much as possible, we want the ability of the income that's generated from the hire of the, of the pitch, and if you like, the associated spend, however that might shake out. We want it to be as close to cost neutral as possible. Um, but obviously, again, it's sensible for us to um, work out roughly what the cost implications would be um, if income levels don't achieve what we um, what we hope them to. Now, the, the, in, in terms of the, the the running costs for for a, a 3G pitch, um, there are um, a variety of um, different demands uh, on our on our resources to make that happen. But what we've what we've tried to do is make sure 
that our um, costs balance against what we think is a sensible level of income. Now, um, we will need to make sure that we budget for if that income doesn't um, appear and there will be uh, different business models um, that we'll need to look at, but that will come off the back of when we do the work with the, the usage schedule, we will then know what we think the income levels will be. But what we have made clear as a council is that we are supportive of this project. And if that means that we need to um, provide some um, uh, um, finance to keep that sustainability going, then that's that's a decision that the executive will need to take next month. But but we will we will identify what those budget risks are. Question 25, we already answered. So question 26 from Graham Storey. It's to do with scheduling and whether football will be restricted when there is a rugby is on. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, no is the short answer. Um, what, what we will try and do is make sure that wherever possible, in advance, we will have the conversation um, between all the different partners. So let's, let's assume that a club uh, a football club's playing on a Saturday and um, a rugby club meet, and the rugby club have games on a Saturday, what we will try and do is find a way to ensure that we minimise disruption for, for either party. But the ground that we are proposing to build is mindful of the fact that we might quite possibly have games running alongside each other. We would seek to avoid that where possible because, again, that has other operational problems around people on site and, and again, the, the issues around um, parking and disruption to neighbours. These are all things that we need to balance up. But no, it's it's not a case that one partner immediately has priority over the other. We will need to look at it almost on a season by season basis to make sure that the, the scheduling is sensitive to all those different um, views. Next question from Peter Morgan. But why not spend the money to provide an additional pitch as opposed to using the existing one? Um, we are, Mr. Norman, it's a simple answer. Uh, there's, there's the um, sports, sports ground strategy um, states that we're spending a further £1.8 million pounds on producing six 3G pitches across the district over the course of the next five to 10 years. And a large part of that's also going to be producing new grass pitches uh, again throughout the, the district, but particularly in Newbury. Yeah. Um Next one from uh, uh, David Marsh. The Marsh again. Yeah. Um, did you just say fo football will be played at the new ground on Sunday and not just rugby? I, I don't know if that's the exact words I used, but certainly what um, my position is now is that any discussions that we have about the scheduling will be about making sure that the sports ground is used um, um, as much as is reasonably possible given all the other um, conversations about um, impact on neighbours, but that the usage does not mean that the uh, pitch is not available on any day. So, so we, in relation to um, any views that um, rugby or football has a carte blanche or a blanket um, uh, um, uh, uh, blocking out of a particular time slot, that is not the case. That's part of the, the scheduling. What we've discussed with the rugby club is to make sure that we don't interrupt any of their um, uh, intended um, training sessions um, on the Sunday. But that is different to all of Sunday and across the whole of the year. So we are looking at the balancing up across that usage schedule of making sure as many clubs get to play on the surface as possible, including Sunday afternoons. Um, Whiting, has your traffic evaluation facility impacted the site, which will obviously have considerable use throughout the week, will have on the other existing facilities on the entire site, uh, Falkland Surgery, David Lloyd Health Club and the residential care home? So the answer to that is no, not yet, but we will look at it. So it will need to, obviously, for it to be sensible, we will need to look at the traffic movements on the site, how it is used. Um, so again, the, the, that, that will be part of our consideration when it goes through planning. Similar question from Peter Norman. What we can't have is people using the GP car park as an overflow. What plans are there to ensure this does not happen? 
this is all down to traffic management and it's, it's a, a similar problem I think in most sporting arenas around the country and it's a question of mar marshals making sure that many people part where they should do yeah I, I think I think inevitably there's going to need to be conversations with all of the um, the people that, that operate in that area to make sure that we've got you know a sensible um, plan in place I'm not I'm not going to sit here and guarantee that there isn't going to be somebody who you know tries to park somewhere else but our logic is that the the car park for for um uh on particularly on match days but we can look at it in more general terms is we will have the appropriate controls in place to make sure that the other users of the site are not um impacted we, we will need to manage that as part of our um, arrangements with the rugby club um, jason braidwood this is to do with uh if there are three, I assume, mini pitches on the main pitch, are there enough car parking space at changeover? For example, pitches are hired out from 10 to 11. Teams will be arriving for an 11 to 12 start. Is there enough space and will there be congestion? Well, I think the simple answer is we've got a lot more space than we have at uh, the previous ground. Um, and clearly there's going to be some overlap. Um, and that's something we just got to address. Yeah, I, what, what, I guess what I would say is, um, in, in, in addition to that is we will need to make sure that that front space um, um, opening out onto the ground where the parking um, allocations are, we need to be sensible about things like um, drop off points um, and, and again working through a sensible um, traffic flow on the site that enables speedy drop off and pick up um, and, and again if that means that we need staffing arrangements to make that happen, then we'll look at it. But um, I think I think I've asked the question of the consultants if they think that what we're putting forward is reasonable. They they gave us the calculation of the of the number of spaces based on the potential usage of the site, and they say that that's um, acceptable. Um, but again, we, 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 there's an element of we'll have to we we'll have to look and see. But at the moment, we believe yes, it is suitable. Um, next question, uh, will there be changing room for both sexes? Yes, yes. is the short answer. Um, and last question, um, is there really the potential to expand the facility to a thousand capacity given the space available? Um, David, um, I, I don't know now, but as I said earlier, I think what we would need to do is once we've finalised the site plan, and when we look at what our long term arrangements need to be, I might be able to answer that question, but we're not seeking to to get to a thousand capacity right now. Um, we just need to we just need to understand what what our options would be in the future. And that will be something that I hope to be able to to look at. But it's not it's not a consideration for right now, if I'm, if I'm honest. Um, I think we're, we're well beyond six o'clock now, so we've overrun our timing. And there are a limited number of additional questions there, which, as I said earlier, will be responded to on the council website. Uh, I just want to say thank you for all you've, everyone's attended, and thank you for your questions. I hope that we've addressed them uh, properly and that you understand where we're coming from. Um, and thank you for your time, and I wish you a very pleasant evening. Thank you. Good night.